about 11 years ago, the setting for community-based language training was sort of an informal relationship between provincial government and a number of churches. Our first objective was to formalize the childcare component, recognizing that children are just as much a part of the program as the adults to encourage the learning that can happen in an early year setting and uh, to provide training and education for the people that are taking care of the children and who are mainly newcomer women. Now we have over 450 adult learners and about 280 children that come with those adults every day. I start with Mosaic as a participant, attending the family program, because at Mosaic we have different departments. True or false? True. 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 Very good. We have a link for English classes, providing with a child minding, and we have family program. We provide different program for our family and needs. Different program as a positive discipline in everyday parenting. And these are called typical stress responses. We have different diversity, different culture, and that help us a lot to understand our client because all of us, it's already coming from different culture, different respective, different language. And I believe uh, that's very important when you serve newcomers. We need to have the relationship with them. They feel very lonely, they feel very isolated. So we build a relationship and then we start to be open to each other more. You can tell them more about your services. They can tell you more about what they need. Will she do what the doctor says? I think relationship would be number one because they need to feel safe and secure with us. They need to feel safe and secure in the community. They need to feel safe and secure toward their children. It's all about safe and security. We are multicultural. We have about 32 different languages spoken in our staff. It gives a lot of different flavors to have people from different countries working all together. And we often have interesting conversations about how do you do this in your country? And it's super interesting to, to hear the different perspectives. And we try to understand their culture background, the language, their literacy, their religion. One big challenge we had in Winnipeg was that the Yazidis met Arabic speakers in their classes. And for some of the women, listening to an Arabic man was a trigger because of what they had experienced before. It was kind of a tense atmosphere in the beginning when both groups kind of realized we are in the same class because that's the only class that exists in this area. The Yazidi group, they came from a very traumatic journey. They have very traumatic stories. It wasn't easy for people to understand the trauma about it. Also, any trauma, people would react differently in it, in the situation. We're peripherally connected to the healthcare system. It's certainly healthcare and health issues are a major concern for families. And knowing that we can refer people to the healthcare system and that they're going to receive a level of service that's consistent with how they're treated in settlement organizations. That for me would be a huge benefit for people. I can imagine that it's very scary to enter the healthcare system and not see someone that is gonna represent you or be there for you. I think this is a very valuable project in providing that kind of additional level of navigation support and service to newcomers so that we can feel confident when we need to refer people to the system.